So the day really is going to follow a simple format. We'll have presentation for a while, which unfortunately have to listen to me. And then you're going to be let loose on the workshop exercises. All the exercises, I say, are going to be uh, online and you'll be able to read through them and then do the steps as the, the exercises talk you through. Each time we get to an exercise point, we're going to give you a time frame. Okay, so we'll say, right, in half an hour we'll be back to continue the presentation, or in one hour, or in ten minutes. So that's how the exercises are going to work. Okay, so let's have a look at the agenda. You all have a repository today, right? Well, maybe, but not everybody does. And even those who do may not use it and build it through Visual Studio. So the first part of the day, that's where we're going to start. The repository really is the kingpin of everything we do in Synergy. Always has been and always will be, even though a lot of people don't use the repository. From then, we're going to show you how you can build window libraries. We're going to talk about object libraries, uh, sorry, window libraries, not object libraries. Come to those in a minute. Some of you will be using Toolkit. Some of you will have used Toolkit in the past years ago. Some of you are sat there going, I don't want to learn Toolkit. We are not doing Toolkit today. This is not a Toolkit masterclass by any shape or form of the imagination, although you will be editing a script or two. But we will be looking at how we can build window scripts inside Visual Studio, okay? Just to make things simple and nice for your development environment. Also, the way we're going to build the window libraries might, may well give you ideas of the way you can build other things that are not necessarily Synergy project related, okay? Like OLBs and ELBs. Next, we're going to build some libraries. OLBs, object libraries, and ELBs, executable libraries. At that point in time, we're going to give you some code. And that code won't build, because we feel good. Okay? So we're not asking you to type in loads of code. We're going to give you that. But the code we do give you is not going to build. And why is it not going to build? Well, it's not going to build because we want to show you some of the more common errors that you'll get when you start trying to do this and configuring your own systems within Visual Studio, your own build environments. When you first move to Visual Studio and your Synergy development, traditional Synergy development, bring your existing code that's built for donkey's years into the editor, you're probably going to be quite shocked that your once clean building environment now fails with thousands and thousands of errors. Okay? It's a frightening, daunting prospect when it happens. You think, oh my god, my life is at an end, I will never get there. You will get there. And usually fixing one error tends to fix hundreds if not thousands of errors. And this is just the way that Visual Studio and Synergy is built under Visual Studio and the way we enforce the prototyping and all that kind of good stuff. It won't take you long before your windows are building and very functional. Having built the libraries, then we'll build our mainline programs using the appropriate Visual Studio mainline projects and templates. Here we're going to show you how to reference the libraries and the repositories and ensure everything builds and links together and any changes we make down the, the sort of build chain will ripple up and cause other things to build. And we'll do that because of references and dependencies. So if we make a change in the repository, all our subroutines will rebuild. If we change the re subroutines, the main lines will rebuild. If we change a window library, something will rebuild. And at this point, we'll be able to run the program. And it will be a cool toolkit application. So hot toolkit windows programming, here we come. And really, the morning, that covers the basics. Following lunch, we're going to look at how many developers are enhancing their applications, the look and feel of their applications, with a new UI. Okay? So we're going to essentially replace and throw away the UI toolkit. It's going to be a simple Windows presentation UI, or WPF, and it's going to be a little layer that we can access from our traditional Synergy applications using the .NET API. Some of you will be using the .NET API today, some of you won't. But again, even if you're not, it's a way of showing you how to do this sort of project building inside Visual Studio. It's not a, a masterclass on this is what you should do with your Synergy development, and this is what you should do with your user interface. Okay? That's not what we're about today. We're just about showing you how to do things in Visual Studio. So if you're using GenNet and creating the .NET wrappers, we'll show you how you can automate all that and create scripts that will run when you try and do builds in Visual Studio and all that kind of stuff. And then why stop there? Given the ability that we have to take our traditional Synergy code that we wrote 35 billion years ago and build it under Synergy.net. And we may as well do that. Okay? And we'll see the code, exactly the same code that was working in traditional, will now be working in .NET. 
So we're going to create .NET native assemblies using the same existing code. We're not going to move the code, we're going to leave the code exactly where it is and we'll show you how best to reference that code so you still have one code branch, one code archive and all that kind of stuff. And finally, uh, we're going to build a completely Synergy.NET. It's, it's a little browser window. It's not a browser as in a, an internet browser. It's a WPF browser, and it incorporates some Bing mapping. So as you're moving around elements in the program, you'll see the, where things were happening in Bing maps. So you'll see mapping. And then we'll be done. That'll be it. the end of the day, the end of the workshop. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to wait, take away everything you need to know to build traditional applications inside Visual Studio. OK, the application then. Let's talk a minute about the application. It is a very simple application that allows the management uh, of my vinyl record collection, or some of it anyway. Now, as I said, and I've said several times, this workshop is not about how to write the Synergy applications, but how to build them using Visual Studio. As most of you are not using the toolkit, which is fine. But the principles are the same regardless of how your application looks or feels, as long as it's a traditional Synergy solution. Okay? So no, this is not an earth-breaking, groundbreaking, fabulous UI. When you have the code built and running, it is going to be accessing data on a remote web service. You will not load data and bring data down onto your local machines. Therefore, you will all be accessing the same data. Therefore, do not go deleting or changing things in the program. Simply run the program, say, I am pleased that program runs because that means it has built through Visual Studio. I will now close the program so as not to disrupt every other person in the room by deleting all the data. OK? Thank you. This is not a stress test of how good I am at programming UI toolkit programs, OK? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've really done any. Um, but it's how the various elements build together. And as I said, we'll enhance the UI, well, a little bit at least, anyway, uh, and give it a more modern desktop look and feel. And again, that exercise is not about great-looking UIs. It's about processing and building the code and the various elements of the projects together and how to tool the APIs. So, let's get back to where we were. Synergy repository. This is going to be our first exercise in a few minutes. It's the most simple and basic elements of the complete Synergy development environment, and most likely most important, yet overlooked by many, many developers. Who does use the repository? Okay, that show of hands is very worrying and concerning for me. Because the, the repository, as it says on the slide, is the kingpin. Everything comes from the repository. It defines the complete metadata and underpins your entire application. Okay? It's not just a fancy little program that allows you to specify a few fields in a, a structure. And it's not just about record layouts and the definitions, although that is, of course, its core purpose. And it's the minimum requirement that the Synergy compiler needs. It needs the structure name, which you'd think of as a record name, the field, name, and the type, and the size. But it also allows for describing all, all the validation rules. So you can say a, a field is, has to be uppercase. It has a maximum value of this, a minimum value of this. It has to have a value. It's a required field. Things like that. You can specify formatting, especially for numeric fields, for example. And you can also specify the relationships between data elements. This field over here actually allows you to link to this file over here. Almost everything we do today benefits from using and building up a good repository and a well-formatted repository. Some tooling like XF4DBC requires the repository. Now, if I ask the question, who uses the repository, and we got half a dozen hands up, I've got a feeling if I asked who uses the repository who does so because of XF or DBC, I'm sure most of you would then put your hands up. Because a lot of people use the repository purely so they can use XF or DBC without actually using it inside their applications. So at its very basic, you define a structure and the fields within it. Simple. These fields have a name, a type, and a size. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So if you don't have a repository today, you have a collection of include files. Those include files define the data layouts that are used throughout your application. Okay? The quickest and easiest way to build your repository from scratch is to load those fields defined in your include files directly into structures in your repository. 
It's done through the repository program. It's a bit confusing when you talk about repository because the repository is actually two ISAM files on the disk. But when we talk about the repository, it's actually the program that we use to maintain the repository. So we use the repository to maintain the repository. OK. So it's done through the repository program. And um, you do that for each include file. Unfortunately, there's no global, here's a directory with all my include files in. Will you please include them into my repository and make my life simple? So it takes a few minutes. It literally is that, a few minutes. Repositories can also be loaded from schema files that contain synergy data language definitions that basically describe the layout and structure of the associated structures and fields. We're actually going to use both today. We're going to use the repository program to do things with our include files, and we're going to use the schema file to maintain that and then rebuild our repository from it. And of course, if you don't want to use your include files, you can go straight into a repository or you can just go straight into a schema file and just type it all in by hand. So let's take a quick look at the structure of the repository project. It is quite important. Firstly, the repository files that the project builds are the same as the repository files, the main and text files that, for those of you who've got repositories today, would have. Potentially puts them in a different area because it puts them in a bin debug folder when you build it through Visual Studio. You can change that, but let's leave it as it is in the workshop. The main file, for those of you who don't know, contains the actual structure information, things like the structure names, the field names, the types, the sizes. And the text file contains textual information, such as prompts and report headings. And the original idea of having the two different files is that you can swap out the text file and change it for a multilingual version. So you could code it in, in English, and then you could code it in a different language, a foreign language like French or German or anything like that. Now these are the main files, the main text files. These are the files that our other projects are going to utilize to get at the data layouts and the data structures that they need to be able to build. Now the repository project uses schema files or a schema file to build the main and text repository. And the schema file on the slide, it's called repository.scm, is a primary source for building the repository. That sounds a bit obvious, but it is important and can be a very big source of pain for you. So let me explain a little. If you edit the schema file to make modifications using the Synergy Data Definition Language, you'll be in good shape. Life is great, OK? Because you make a change to the file, the Visual Studio build project goes, oh, you've changed the schema file. I'll rebuild your repository for you. And it goes off and rebuilds it. Fine, wonderful. However, like me, if you use the Synergy repository program, to maintain your repository, that's actually making changes directly into the ISAM files, the main and text ISAM files. So unless you remember to generate repository schema each time you've made changes, your changes will be overwritten by Visual Studio that rebuilds from your schema file into the files. So you will lose whatever changes. It has happened to me on many occasions. Okay? So be very conscious and we, we talk about this in the workshop, in the, the exercises, when you've made changes using the repository program, remember to generate the schema, OK? The second pain point is when you open the, the Synergy repository in Visual Studio, you'll be po repointing at the correct repository and main and text files, which is great. You're in Visual Studio. I want to edit my repository. You go straight into the repository. However, when you go to generate the repository schema, which I've just told you you must do, otherwise you'll lose all your changes, the repository program basically remembers the folder location where it last thought you were. If you've got multiple repositories in multiple different development environments for multiple different customers, then you can very easily get the wrong repository schema file, overwrite it, and you've lost everything in the project that you're not actually working in. OK, so you can save it. It'll be saved somewhere else. Your project builds. You think life is good, and it's not. So you have been warned. Make sure, check and double check that the repository schema that you're generating from the repository is being generated in the right area. And we talk again about that in the workshop. For the workshop, we're going to create a very simple repository. Repositories can contain templates and have full inheritance of structures and field information. That's not for us today. This is not a repository masterclass. This is purely a, we need a repository project inside Visual Studio to build some simple structures. So let's have a quick look at the basics of what a Synergy repository is all about. 
on what it is about in Visual Studio and where do we start. The Synergy SDI, which you've all downloaded and installed, language integration package, provides various project templates that we can see on the screen. You can select a new project and Visual Studio presents you with these project templates in a dialog. Selecting Synergy D in traditional gives you the Synergy D repository project template. As you'll see, repositories are compatible with both traditional and Synergy.net stuff, but the actual repository project is only available in the, in the traditional folder. Remember to name your repository, or you can leave it as repository one, but the workshop will certainly ask you to give it a nice name. Please give it a nice name. If you're adding this to an existing solution, then it'll put it in the right solution folder underneath the solution folder, and um, life will be good. Here is a Solution Explorer. <clears throat> this is Solution Explorer inside Visual Studio. If you use Visual Studio, and again, when you get to the workshops, it'll talk you through. You will need the Solution Explorer visible. If you've not got it, it's on the View menu column. Make sure you've got it. Make sure you pin it, dock it, whatever you want to do with it. If you don't see the Solution Explorer, then, as I say, go to the View menu and select Solution Explorer. A creative project contains only the default repository schema, which will be repository.scm. You can double click this, it's just a text file, and you can view it. It won't have much in it when you see it first time, but later when we've added our structures, you'll see. If you know and love the Synergy Data Definition language, which I personally don't, that's why I always use the repository program, then as I said, you can edit this repository.scm file directly within Visual Studio. And when you make changes that way, the build system will recognize those changes and build your repository files. You will not get IntelliSense if you are editing that file. It is a potential to do that we will add IntelliSense for repository schema files in the future. We today are going to use the Synergy repository utility to quickly set up our repository and import our existing record definitions. Um, you should always run the repository directly from within Visual Studio, and that will ensure that you're looking at the right repository files for that project, for that solution, for that development environment. And the Synergy repository is found on the Tools menu inside Visual Studio. The repository is a very simple UI toolkit interface. You can modify things, view things, and run a few utilities. For the workshop today, we'll be uh, modifying structures and using options from the Utilities menu to generate our repository schemas. We will not be worried, as I said, about files, templates, and formats. These additional capabilities basically empower you to define and fine-tune the metadata for tools like XFODBC, like UI Toolkit Script Compiler, like CodeGen, etc. Now, this is an important note. When we first run the repository, remember, we're not giving you a vanilla virtual machine and development environment. You're using your own today. So when we first run our repository and select structures, you should see an empty list as per what you see on the screen or on the feed in front of you. If you do that and you don't have an empty list and you have structures defined, then you're somewhere in your environment you're defining the variables RPS fill and RPS fill. Stop the thank you very much, don't move forward at this point because you will really mess things up. You need to edit your Synergy INI or your Syn user INI or check at your command level and figure out where you're setting RPS fill and RPS fill. Comment them out, unset them, do whatever, and do that until you get the repository running up with no structures in it. Otherwise, our stuff's going to get mixed up with your development stuff, and then you'll all shout at me when your developments don't work and this workshop doesn't work, and it won't be my fault. You have been warned. So as I say, do not continue. Um, there is notes in the workshop that say, well, if you do see this, this is how you can run the SynCheck INI utility from within Visual Studio. You can open a command prompt. It'll help you and guide you through finding out where your repository main and text file environment variables are set. But close the repository down, sort out your settings, run it again, and get to a point where you have no structures in. So when you run the repository, it will be empty as you see there. Adding a structure will take uh, just two main steps. First step is to define the structure, which you can see on the screen. We'll give the structure a name, define the type, and give it a general description, i.e. what it is. These are the three required elements of the structure definition. When you're in this dialog, though, don't click the OK button, which you would expect and normally do. Um, it will just create an empty structure and take you back to the structure list, and you have to select attributes off the menu column. Just click the attributes button, and then we can complete the second step of the process. 
As I say, if you do click OK, then you can just jump to the um, attributes off the uh, structure menu. So at this point, we've got a couple of options. You can either enter each field, or you can select the load from an include file, which is what we're going to do. If you add fields, you then can't load from an include file. So don't add a field thinking, oh, I'll add one because I fancy it, and then I'll try and include from the include file. You can't do that. For the workshop, we'll download three include layouts. Um, ensure you save these files to a local folder. In the workshop, it asks you to save it to the solution folder that you've created in Visual Studio. Do so, and life will be good. Then, when you're including the file, I recommend you use the drill button, which is the button with the three dots on, and go and find those for each individual files as the instructions say. As I said, we've got three layouts that you're going to use, so you'll have to include each one individually. Make sure you include the right structure for the right include, otherwise you'll get countries in shops and shops in vinyl and vinyl in countries and things won't build at all well. Just take your time, as they say. Once you've loaded a structure, it will then immediately show you the fields that have come from the include file. And then you can back out to the repository, again the instructions show you, or basically on the general column you can either click close buttons or off the general column click exit. And that will take you back each level. And as you go back each level it will save where you are. You will get prompted about do you want to overwrite things, do you want to save this, do you want to do that. Say yes all the time. And you'll have your three structures created. Because we're going to use the repository program, and remember that Visual Studio uses the repository schema to build the repository files, the final task is to create our repository schema based on what we've just added to our repository using our repository program. So, as I say, this sounds a little strange. We've created the repository using the repository utility, but now we're going to generate the schema file which is going to build our repository for us. It's a bit backward, but that's just the way it is with the repository. Basically, it's like that because the build system can't read the ISAM files. It can only read the textual schema file. And as I said, as I mentioned earlier, if you use a repository utility to update your repository, then you must generate the schema file from it, otherwise the build system will not be able to build. And make sure that you generate the repository in the right location. In our workshop example, we'll use a single schema file. You can have multiple schema files, but you can't control the order in which these are built currently. You need to pre-process or potentially pre-process any scripts and have them all in the right order or merge them into one in the right order before the actual repository builds. And you can do that in a pre-build event, but that's not for this exercise, it's going to be for a future exercise. So for our repository, we're going to have a single repository schema file that contains all our repository structures. When you're selecting the schema file here to generate, I would always recommend you either use the drill button and locate it, or you enter the full path, because as I say, it will remember the folder where you were at the last time, and it might put it in the wrong place, and you really don't want to mess up your existing development environments. As I said, the default repository schema name is repository.scm. If you've got a number of different ones, it's always a good idea to rename that file. We don't sort of hard code and specify it must be called that. It's just a default. So before we head into doing the first exercise, which hopefully I'll get you a link to, just take a few minutes to discuss how you can best do this to do the workshops. Everything is going to be done in Visual Studio, as that's our favoured uh, integrated development environment, the one of choice. All the exercises are going to be delivered via your browser. And as the screen shot shows, why not split your screen? Make one half Visual Studio and the other half the browser. As you're doing each step from the browser, select the text in the browser, highlight it, and then do the actual work in the, the Visual Studio. For the majority of the time, you will not be editing any code. It's more moving things around in Visual Studio and creating projects and setting properties and things like that. You will not need the full screen Visual Studio editing experience for the vast majority of today. So, within the exercises, there are points where you'll need to download code or download some files. These will be links to compressed files, zip files. Click the link and you'll normally get a prompt that says, what do you want to do? Do you want to save it or do you want to open it? Make sure you open it. If you want to save it, 
save away, it'll save anyway, but if you do open, then it'll save it and open it for you. When you open the compressed file, simply highlight all the files and folders. Sometimes there'll be one file or two files, sometimes there'll be quite a few files with folders and all that kind of stuff. Right click them all, highlight them all, right click and do a copy, okay? And then the, the instructions will tell you where to navigate to so you can paste them. 99% of the time you're going to paste them into the project folder that you've just created for each project that we're creating for each exercise. I think it's the last exercise that actually asks you to put them in the, the top solution folder, okay? So read the instructions real, real careful. While you're in your Explorer, because you've got um, it open from your downloads that you've just got, what we're recommending is you put it in your Documents Visual Studio 2017 Projects folder and you'll create a folder in there with a solution called Dev Partner. This folder doesn't exist, you will create this folder. If you don't want to put it in your Documents Visual Studio 2017 Projects folder, that's fine. I don't mind. There's no requirement that it has to go there although the instructions do talk about it, assuming it is there. So if you don't put it there, if you put it somewhere like C colon backslash I want to do it here, please, thank you very much folder. Just remember that when you're doing the future exercises. Okay, so exercise one is going to take you through creating a Visual Studio solution. And the solution is going to be used to hold all our projects that we create today. Then we're going to add a, a project to the solution and it's going to be a repository, Synergy DE repository project. This is going to allow you to build up your repository and include the structures. As we said, everything is online, and I've not been able to get you the link, so I'm going to do that momentarily. If you navigate to that, you will get a list of all the exercises. Please just do the first one. 